Hey, what's going on guys? Coming to you with Armada Wave 5, the Phoenix Home Expansion Pack. We are gonna unbox this thing and take a look at the this beautiful looking ship and uh, see what all comes with it. Look at this thing, come on. Give me all the cards, they always put them in the second half of this. All right, all right, let's, first off, let's take a look at the ship. Let's take a look at this pretty, pretty thing. Always gotta be careful when you pull these out because I'm always afraid I'm gonna break something off. But wow, here it is. It is uh, feels a little bigger than a CR90, uh, and of course it should because it is bigger than a CR90. But well, look at the back on that too. Look at all those engines. Look at all those engines. This thing's gorgeous. I feel like this should like fold. Out. I guess this does. Does these do these collapse? Like the X-wing has had a lot of stuff lately where like they have moving pieces. And could you imagine if these like wings just folded in? would be awesome and you got your little I don't know if, what this is over here I don't think that's big enough to be like a bridge because the bridge is right there right but maybe it's a, a tower it's beautiful though looks really good all right let's see what else we get we have our small base this is a small base ship uh, and then we have a rules insert and uh, I don't think there's any special rules with this it's just giving you oh it has the new fleet up, uh, upgrade icon so it's telling you called Fleet Command. Oh yeah, it's called, so the new Fleet Command Upgrade Icon. All right, it's not called Upgrade Icon, it is an Upgrade Icon. All right, let's 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 pull everything out of here. We got some cards, we got some cardboard. Let me take a look at all of it. All right, so we've got, um, we've, first off we've got our, our arc here on the ship. Let's take a look at it. Now you've got a bigger front arc on this, a uh, real small rear arc, and you know, um, average size side arcs. But you know, they're, they're, if you look at the, the front arc, it's much bigger. And this is nice because we don't have a whole lot of front arc Rebel ships. So uh, so this will this be a welcome addition to maybe a Nebulon and Liberty uh, type of fleet. So we've got number 17 for our markers and our normal cardboard here, and then we have our shield dials and two command tokens with all of our normal tokens. So everything else, all the rest of the cardboard is pretty standard. Uh, now let's look at our ship cards. Now the Pelta command ship um, is awesome, right? So let's see, we got 56 and 50 and 60. So we're gonna look at the 56 first. This is our cheaper version. This is the modified Pelta class assault ship. Uh, hull, hull of five, anti-squadron of a blue and a black, so pretty good anti-squadron. Um, we've got one, uh, three different, you know, um, defense tokens, but the real interesting thing here is the movement. It's only speed two, which is surprising. And I'm also surprised that it's um, got two and then a one one. It's, uh, so it's really gonna be a very slow ship, but it'll still be able to turn fairly well. So that's pretty surprising. All right, so we've got red dice all around, strong in the front, actually pretty decent out at the back as well, uh, and then black dice in the sides in the front. Uh, we've got two command, one squadron, and four engineering. Um, two command is, you know, a lot. I, I suppose that makes sense. This is a bigger ship than a CR90, uh, and it's probably on par with a Nebulon B as far as command, so that makes sense. Four engineering is actually pretty good. This makes it a little bit of a tankier small ship. Uh, it's combined with the five hull, so you may actually want to actually run engineering commands here, which is surprising. Shields, we got uh, three in the front as well, which also makes it a little tankier from the front, so you definitely want to point the front of this thing at your, uh, at your bad guys. Uh, all right, so we've got the... Uh, Here's our upgrade dials at the bottom. We, we can put some people on there. We, we don't get turbo laser. We just have the, uh, the torpedo or the ordnance, rather, our black upgrade dial. Um, but then we have the new fleet command, fleet support. And uh, if we compare this to the the 60 point version, this is one of the changes right away. Is um, we lose the ability to increase our black dice, but then we add the uh, offensive retrofit. So there's that um, and that can give us the, uh, things like you know extra anti-squadron extra squadron support or even things like a tractor beam so and that's really the only difference as far as upgrades you can give this costs four more points uh, and you so you lose your you know it's less of an attack ship at this point right it's less of an attack ship and because you also lose a squadron um, see so this has only got one blue for anti-squadron so it's definitely less offense um, but you do gain blue dice, so you can still you can attack, you know, ship to ship a little bit more. 
Um, and it got you got way more squadron support, right? So you have an anti squadron value of one over here, and it goes up to three. So if you if this is your option, you're going to be commanding squadrons from here, and that's why you get the offensive retrofit because you can increase that up to four if you want, or or, or add some other um, offensive retrofit I items. So that's the two cards. Now let's look at the upgrades we get in here. I'm going to start off with Commander Sato. He is from Star Wars Rebels, and he is uh, you know pretty big deal for this uh, for this wave when a friendly ship is attacking a ship at distance one of a friendly squadron so you have to have a squadron you know near the the enemy ship before rolling attack dice the attacker may replace up to two dice in its attack pool with an equal number of dice of uh, any color or colors so you can change out your dice now the only thing that makes this less than awesome is I it says before rolling attack dice, so it's not like you can roll your dice and then pick up your blanks and then re-roll them and swap them with something else. If that was after rolling attack dice, it would be amazing. Um, but it's still cool because it allows you to roll black dice at long range, right? Or blue dice if for some reason you need to have a higher chance of getting an accuracy. Uh, and, you can ch and you can choose. So it gives you the option to roll black dice at long range, which is great for a lot of ships. Like specifically, like that would work well with this version because then you put your, you know, your your, your assault proton torpedoes or something like that on there, and then you're triggering those at long range. Uh, so that's cool. Um, but you want to have at least two red so that you can replace the two. And, you know, if you're only rolling one red at long range, it wouldn't be as good. So Commander Sato. People are excited about him, and he's given some new options for the Rebels. Uh, you do have to have ships, squadrons close by. All right, Major Durlin. Before you suffer uh, damage from an attack, you may exhaust this card to reduce the total damage by one. So, you know, extra damage mitigation. You can reduce damage by one each turn. Seven points. Uh, and, oh my gosh, would this guy not be insane on Bright Hope, which is already almost impossible to kill? All right. All right. Ahsoka Tano. Who doesn't? love Ahsoka. She's like the greatest, right? Um, during the activation of a friendly ship at distance 1 to 5, you may exhaust this card to discard one command token from that ship. If you do, that ship may gain one command token of any type. So she gives you some command token mitigation. I'm not that impressed with that ability. Uh, I'll have to see it played some more to see the real benefits of it, but I usually pick the right tokens. I don't usually have a problem like, oh, I, I wish I had an engineering token instead of a squadron token. You know, I usually pick the right ones the first time, so we'll see. This is, uh, and I think she's also a, a much better character and deserves something better than that. Um, rapid launch base. All right, now this is why I was really excited about this. De before deploying fleets, you may set aside a number of friendly squadrons up to your squadron value next to your ship card. When you do a squadron command, for each squadron you would activate with this command, you may instead place one of your set-aside squadrons within distance one. It cannot move this activation. However, it does not say it cannot attack this activation. So, basically, you get to keep your squadrons inside the ship, and then they're launching and at distance one. So they launch close to the ship. They obviously they don't have enough time to launch distance five of the ship, but they can launch outside of the ship and then suddenly attack. So this is great. This is just this is just awesome. And this is it's also gonna keep the board less cluttered if you have a whole bunch of squadrons inside your ship or or if you want to run something. Um, and this isn't rebel only. Imagine putting Maul or Mythyl on uh, on a Star Destroyer. Oh you got some you got a whole bunch of squadrons you're bearing down on Maul or Mythyl? Okay, no problem. Boom. Uh, you know, he drops out and does one damage to all of them and then attacks. And it's just amazing. All right, fighter coordination team. We've seen this before, but it's great to finally get another one outside of the interdictor. So, um, great for squadrons, lets you move them again, and it doesn't matter if they've already activated, they just have to be unengaged. Flechette torpedoes. This one's new. Uh, while attacking a squadron, you may spend a black die with a critical icon to toggle its activation slider to the activated side. That's great. That's a really cool card, and it's so cheap too. Like if you're trying to, if you're running out of points or whatever, this is a great upgrade to give a ship that you might not have given something, you know, bigger like uh, proton torpedoes. All right, now we're getting the titles. Phoenix Home. You may you gain one additional officer officer icon in your upgrade bar, and you can be assigned up to four command tokens instead of a number of command tokens equal to your command value. So. Your command value is still the same. You'll still have the same number of dials, 
like with just two in the case of this, this ship, uh, but you can get four tokens. So it gives you a lot of options. Very, very cool. Uh, and now we have the new fleet support. We've got three different ones, and these are cool. Uh, some of them I really, really like. I, I think it's shields to maximum, but we'll test the last one. All right. Uh, entrapment formation costs five. At the start of the ship phase, you may discard this card to spend a nav token or spend a nav token. Uh, you can, so you can discard the card or you can spend a nav token. Uh, if you do, until the end of the round, each friendly ship may change its speed by one during its determined course setup. So that's good. This is a good way to counter if people are using, um, you know, uh, Constantine or tractor beams against you, or you just want extra mobility. That's cool. All right, all fighters, follow me. At the start of the ship phase, you may discard this card or spend a uh, squadron token. If you do, until the end of the round, the speed of each squadron that a friendly ship activates is increased by one to a maximum of five until the end of that squadron's activation. So we use this as like, virtually the same thing as the other one, but you know, instead this is focusing on squadrons. So uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so you, it makes your squadrons go faster. You know, can be great, especially with B-wings, which are already notoriously slow. All right, all shields to the maximum. This is my favorite one. At the start of the ship phase, you may discard this card or spend an engineering token. If you do, until the end of the round, before a friendly ship reveals a command, it may recover one shield. So, this is a no-brainer, right? It was already going to cost you an engineering token to get a shield back anyway, right? Because even, you know, depending on the ship you put it on, you know, you're going to get one engineering, and this is at the start of the ship, so you get to do it for your own ship as well. But basically, every ship gets a shield back, and this is great on, um, it's not even a range requirement on it. You don't even have to be close. It's just all your ships get a shield back. That's, 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 for only six points, man? That's like redundant shields for everybody. Imagine you put redundant shields on your ships also, and that everybody's getting two back. I don't know. That's, I don't know. That may, maybe it'll play out differently, but this seems like an extremely efficient card. For only six points, you get a shield back on every ship, every turn, potentially. That's insane. I love it. Love it. It's my favorite card out of this set. All right. Or, all right. <clears throat> so, this has been your Phoenix Home expansion unboxing from Armada's Wave 5. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, and also uh, leave comments. I appreciate all the comments, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.